Um, so I'm Cassie Panera. I'm an assistant director in career planning. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Kira Lee. I'm the interim director of the Career Planning Development Center. So yeah, thank you for coming today. Um, and if you have questions, um, feel free to put those into the chat at any point, and then we'll also um, get to those questions at the end. Yes, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and after we are um, done today, I, I will also send you the links directly to this presentation. So you'll be able to access all the things we've been talking about. But most of these things already exist in either Handshake or our Connections page as well. So this is just kind of a guide to show you our quick overview on the resources that we have available. And our um, mission is to assist individuals with exploring and defining their personal career goals while developing the skills and confidence necessary to succeed. And today's aim is just to introduce some of our top resources like Handshake, Going Global, and give you an overview of what our fall program calendar looks like so you can add them to your calendar and come to those information sessions um, or other events that we have planned. So. Any new student will automatically get access to Handshake after they've signed up for their first round of classes. So it takes, you know, sometimes a little bit of time after that, but they're automatically added to Handshake and they can use their uh, SSO credentials, the same ones that you use to get into your connections page or email, Webster email is the same ones to get into Handshake. Um, and there's a variety of different features that I'll walk you through to show you just to kind of utilize Handshake to the best of its abilities. So from your main page on your student account, you have a bunch of different resources you can use. One of the most popular ones is the job page. On the job page, there are great um, filters that we recommend checking out. So if you're looking for on-campus jobs, you can drop down the All Filters tab and select On Campus. All On Campus jobs will be posted in Handshake if they're if they're there. Um, and so you can sort by that. If you're looking for, um, you know, jobs or internships off campus, you can also search this way. And it's a great thing to kind of understand that employers have to opt into Handshake. And so they typically understand who their audience is. They understand that their audience are going to be those students that don't have a ton of prior experience maybe, and they're looking for someone who's either entry level or looking for interns. So the employers know who they're looking for. And so that's really helpful. At the bottom of the filter section, the all filters section, there's um, a filter that under the work authorization section, it states jobs that are open to candidates with CPT and or OPT. Um, this filter has been around for a little bit. And so employers, typically the ones who know what that means are the ones that will activate it. So it doesn't mean that other jobs out there won't hire someone for CPT or OPT, but it does mean that the employers who select this know what it is. So that's kind of one step of the hurdle there. So we always recommend using this as a search filter if you are an international student looking for that CPT or OPT experience. This will narrow it down for you a little bit, and then you can search from there, you can search by location. If you're in St. Louis, you can put in that city and then show the results. Handshake is great because it typically lists things that you have expressed interest in before. Um, mine is a little bit of a hodgepodge because I help students search through things sometimes. But if you are consistently looking at a specific type of job, those will typically come to the top of the list there. One other program you may choose to, or one other filter you may choose to kind of use is, you know, if you're looking for that part-time versus full-time, you can select there. Um, and then if there's specific industries, you know, you are interested in working in versus not, you can search there. Some students will search by major or program. Um, and so some jobs are very non-discriminatory and they'll just say, we're looking for people and, and they'll list out a bunch of majors. Um, and so if something is somewhat relevant, 
searching that way could be useful, or it could just help you get a sense of maybe the job titles, and then you can go from there and redefine your search as you need. Once you have filters set the way you want them, it is um, a great idea if they're really specific to select that notify me um, button here at the top. It will send you a notification every time a new job that fits those specific parameters gets posted to Handshake. And we get new jobs posted to Handshake every day. Just keep in mind, if you have very wide parameters, you might get a lot of notifications, but you can always go in and adjust your notification settings and turn it on and off um, in your profile. So the job section of resume is great for, like I said, looking for those on-campus jobs, off-campus jobs, off-campus internships, things like that. Another great section of Handshake is the events section. Here is where you'll find all of the events that we have planned um, coming up as well as other employers that are looking um, either locally and nationally. Um, a lot of these are virtual, some are in person. A lot of um, our uh, events are virtual, but we'll have some that are relevant to be in person as well. Um, so you, the, the top ones that come up um, today's session right now, um, our career fair that's uh, planned for September 25th, that's in person, that's at the top um, of our events listings right now. You can sort through these events if you wanted to. Um, you can list, um, you know, if you want just the ones posted by Webster, you can view those all together or you can keep them all, all listed out. Um, I will say that when you see an employer posting an event, sometimes it's an information session about a experience that they have, or sometimes it's um, you know information about uh, federal resumes or things like that. And so it's a great way to kind of get a sense of what that program is they're talking about, but also get introduced to maybe the recruiter that's doing the presenting, be able to ask some live questions. So it's great to kind of check those out and attend them if you're interested in working for that specific company. Sometimes people will RSVP and you'll see like this one says 72 people have RSVP'd. Our experience is not everyone actually attends. So you may get some um, you know, FaceTime with a recruiter, if you're one of the few people that shows up to this, you may be able to ask some more of those specific questions. So keep an eye on those, sign up for the ones that interest you, and just be considerate. If you've signed up for an event and you can no longer make it, we just ask that you unsign up, you um, remove your um, place so that someone else can take your place in line because, um, you know, our Zoom capacity is only 100. Um, and then our in-person capacity, sometimes even less. So just be um, mindful of other people who maybe are on the wait list. Make sure you remove yourself if you no longer plan on coming to any of those events. Next, we can look at the employers tab here in Handshake. Um, this is similar to LinkedIn and that you can go to a specific um, employer page to learn a little bit more about them. Um, from the employer page, you can see reviews by real students on Handshake and what it was like for them to have experienced working there or interning there. Um, they also allow um, students to post what their interview process was like, and they allow them to post one question. So that's a great way to help prepare for an interview if you are interviewing in one of these companies. And from the main page, you can also choose to connect with students who have worked at these companies. So when you select it, you can either filter by alumni only, which will filter all of the Webster people in, or you can just look at anyone. And then if there's anyone that you are interested in connecting with, you as students should be able to see more people with um, the message option here on those people. I would say if they're still in school, they're more likely to respond to Handshake than those who have graduated, um, but definitely worth checking out if you'd like to do some networking opportunities there. And um, I'll get back to this company main page just to show you one more thing. Um, 
Another thing on the company pages is that they will often have a public staff list. Um, this is great if you want to try and connect specifically with a, um, a recruiter or a manager or something like that. If they're willing to, to say who they are, they will post it on this public staff list. And then you can either go through and message them from Handshake or you could look them up in LinkedIn and reach out to them and express your interest. Some employers aren't able to send as many messages as they would like. They have to pay extra for some messages. So I would always just put my email address in there too. If I message an employer and say, hey, I'm really interested in chatting or letting you know that I'd love to work in this internship or for this company, here's my email address if you'd like to chat more. And then that way they can connect with you if they're not able to otherwise. And then we'll go to the Career Center tab um, here. So this is where you will you can find the making appointments section and our other resources. For appointments, you follow through the prompts, you select the school or program that you're a part of. Um, if you're only in one program, it's pretty straightforward. You just click the one, but it doesn't matter which one you select if you're in a couple. Um, and then these are our list of appointment offerings. So career exploration and planning is helping students, um, you know, kind of figure out maybe a direction that they would like to go, ways they can use their degree, um, kind of discussing some of those options. Then we have the job and internship search planning. So these are for off-campus um, opportunities. We will help show you different strategies on how to search, talk about timelines of the best time to start searching and what that looks like, how to network and kind of create some of those connections, things like that. The application material review is to go over um, a cover letter or resume, um, and then we can we provide live feedback in those sessions on things that you can do to improve the quality of your documents. We also look at personal statements for people considering applying to grad school. Um, we'll look at a LinkedIn profile, different things like that. And then we also do interview coaching where we can kind of talk through what an interview might be like, or we can do a mock interview and get you some of that practice in as well. So once you select the type of appointment you want, it will automatically take you to the first available session. Um, and you can select, you know, based on what you have available in your schedule and what we have available to make those appointments. Um, so you select it. And then here is where you can select whether or not you want to meet with us in person or via um, Zoom. So you select that and then you, you can put a little tidbit in here about, you know, what you want to talk about in the session. And then you select this green request button that will come to our office. And then we um, have the ability to approve and send you the Zoom link or things like that. So that's how you make the appointments. And then from the Career Center, we also have some great resources here as well. Um, so I will get to those in a minute. I just wanna make sure I've gotten through all the handshake sections. And yes, I do wanna talk about the resume review process. So anytime a resume is uploaded into Handshake, it will automatically get reviewed by someone in our office. We like to say it can take up to three business days to get some feedback. We hope for it to be quicker. Sometimes it can be longer for like the first part of the semester, depending on how many students are uploading resumes at any one point in time. But just keep that in mind. If you're applying to a, a job, get the resume in a couple of days before the deadline. So we have some time to review it and get it back to you in case you need to do some updates before it will be released. Because Resumes and Handshake will not be released to an employer through a job application until it has been approved by our office. So these are just some really simple guidelines that we recommend following to make sure that the resumes get approved. You want to make sure it's clear and consistent in the U.S. style. Um, you want it to be two pages or less. Um, we always recommend that one page, but sometimes people have significant experiences. They need that second page. Make sure your 
professional email address is listed. We do require for you to have your official Webster degree title included. So not just, um, you know, the name of your program, but also the official title of Master of Arts or Master of Science studying this topic. Um, and then for your experiences, work experiences, we require you to include the location of where you worked, the organization name, your title, the dates that you worked there, some bullet points on what you did there, making sure that everything's free of spelling or grammatical errors, removing those personal pronouns, and then making sure that you're not using any sensitive information, declarations of honesty, or listing references anywhere. Those are kinds of the main things that you're looking to include and not include in that resume. So in a US resume, there should be no photos, no sensitive personal identifying numbers, anything like that. Um, so I can show you what that looks like in Handshake as well. So when you go to, over to this drop down under your profile, you go to my documents and these are where your documents have been uploaded. So we will only, the cover letters and other documents and transcripts don't go through a review process. Those just get uploaded, um, but the resumes will go through the review process. So anything in this section that says approved means that it is releasable via application to an employer. If it says changes required or pending here on the resume specifically, it means that our office has not reviewed it or we have sent it back and we've put in comments and sent you an email on what changes are required before it can be approved. Note that these statuses are different than a job status. When you apply to a job in Handshake, which I don't think I have any to show, you will also see that pending review, um, you know, reviewed, maybe different statuses there. Those are not controlled by us, just the resume status is controlled by us. Um, when you do apply for a job, it may say pending review or review or different things like that. Some employers may update that some employers may not. So just kind of keep that in mind. It That status for a job application may never update because it is a lot of work to go in 300 applications and update that status. So don't let that freak you out a little bit. Some employers just don't update the job application status, but it's the document status that you want to pay attention to the most and make sure that your resume gets approved. Now we'll go back to our Career Center resources. Here is just where a couple other th um, resources live that you can check out. Um, the My Interview Practice Simulator is a great resource to practice. You're interviewing, you create a free account with your Webster email and log in. Um, it uses AI technology to come up with questions specific to the industry that you select in there. You can list, you can request a short interview, long interview, and it will ask you the questions and allow you to record yourself where you can play that recording back and, um, you know, continue to practice and develop your interviewing strategies from there. So that's a great resource to check out. And then another one is Go and Global. So going global, you have to click through our links to access it um, so that you're going accessing it through your student account. And from here, it's a great wealth of information. So we they have um, you know career guides for different cities across the country, different cities across the world that you can check out. Um, and the one that we like to direct students to is the um, international talent section here. So they do list employers who have commonly hired for OPT. It's a little bit difficult to kind of navigate because it's just a big long list with multiple pages. Um, and so while I know that students aren't necessarily looking for that H-1B sponsorship right away, our thought process is that if an employer is willing to sponsor, then they're also probably willing to hire for CPT and OPT where they don't have to sponsor either. So this is just a great way to look through employers to get kind of a sense of a listing of, of where to look for those jobs and internships for CPT and OPT.
So you can search by keyword, you can search by location. Um, I always recommend searching by metro area because um, it searches the cities around the main city that you're looking in as well. Um, and then using a fairly vague keyword, depending on the industry that you're looking at. Um, and then it's pulling in this open source data. So it sometimes takes a little bit of time to load those results. Um, and those results will come in in those pages, like I said before, but it will give you a list of what those companies are that you know are willing to hire, willing to sponsor. They may be also open to hiring for internships, things like that. So it doesn't give you job postings, but it does give you maybe like an employer list to start with. And then from there, you can go directly to that employer page, that employer website, and see what positions they have posted and available from there. So as you can see, this search has resulted in a lot of um, data points, which is great. It is a little bit hard to navigate through again, page by page. Um, when you export it directly, it only exports the first 200 lines. So another resource that you have available to you from our pages is um, you know, we've pulled down the data for you specifically for the St. Louis area. And so these are over the last three years, the list of companies that have been willing to sponsor visas locally. The ones that are highlighted in green are the ones that have been willing to sponsor a significant amount of visas recently. And so they're definitely a great company to, you know, check out and take a look on their website and see what positions they've posted. These are the types of position types they've willing to hire before, their category, their industry, things like that. So this is a spreadsheet that you can check through. This is on our connection page and also linked in this presentation that you can just check through and see, you know, some of these international talent friendly hiring companies. So um, that is Glow and Global and how you get to that, how you search through that if you need. And again, um, the question in the chat says, how do we get access to these links? So all of these are on our connections page and I can show you how to get there. And I will also be emailing you this um, presentation directly from, from our handshake emailing feature. So um, one other thing I'd like to show you is the Mosaic Project Ambassador Companies list. So Mosaic Project is a local nonprofit company that has made it their goal to encourage more local companies to hire international talent locally here in St. Louis. So they've gone through and collected a list of companies that they know that they've kind of partnered with to make sure like, yes, they are open to hiring international talent. They are considered an ambassador company. And so we've listed them here. So this is a great list to check out as well. This is also Googleable and just see, if any of these companies interest you, and then we recommend just going directly to those websites um, to get a sense of you know what what postings they have available at this time. And I can also bring up. Let me bring up our connections page. So from connections, every department has their own page. You can um, see them all here. So on the departments, we're typically near the top because it's alphabetically listed. And then we have all sorts of these categories here as well. Um, and so the application materials page is a great one to check out. This is where we have our resume guides, our resume samples for you to look at, all of those kinds of things to check out as well to help you make the most um, competitive resumes. We also have cover letter guides, that kind of thing. The job and internship search page has some walkthroughs on best strategies for searching, timelines. It has some industry specific resources that you can check out as well. Here's where that international talent spreadsheet is that I was just showing you. And then it goes on and on and on from here. Um, and another great page that we have is the exploration page where you can um, check out the what can I do with this major resource, which kind of provides um, maybe some more industry specific job boards from there. 
and different things like that. Let me see. I think I've covered that. Also on this page, this exploration page is the ONET career profiles where you can get a sense of what skills and abilities and things you might do daily in a specific industry, as well as the occupational outlook handbook, which shows, you know, what industries are growing, what skills are needed to work in those industries, what are the kinds of top things you want to learn going into those fields to make you competitive. So those are some great resources as well. These are both um, just open source Googleable through the Department of Labor. Um, and then the what can I do with this major does has to be accessed through our connection page because we provide access to students um, via our membership. So that's how you can get through there. And again, I already discussed the my interview practice. So you can get to that from our connections page or from Handshake. Um, and you just register for an account with your Webster email, and then it will be free and you'll be able to create the account and go through the practices that way as well. Um, now we will get to our fall calendar. And again, these are also all posted in Handshake now as well. You may not be able to sign up for some of them right away um, because we don't want people just signing up and filling up the spots at the beginning of the year and then not showing up. Um, but we um, we typically open them out a couple weeks in advance so people can register. So they're all here in Handshake and I've listed them here as well. So coming up this week, we have preparing for graduate school for anyone who's considering um, getting an additional degree after this one. We will have a resume writing foundations um, workshop in the end of August. We'll talk about just typical resume guidelines and expectations. Um, and then we have resume writing for international students. Both of those presentations are very similar. It just talks through, you know, what to expect, what you should include, what you should not include for US style resumes specifically. Um, we will do a job and internship uh, planning session um, for, you know, people looking for those spring 2025. We'll talk through strategies and timelines in there. We have a career, uh, two career fair prep sessions, one virtual, one in person to just help you make the most of your career fair experience, you know, what to dress like, what to bring with you prepared, how to network with employers, what topics you should talk about, what topics you should stay away from. Similar to that will be the networking expectations in the US session there. Then we have our career fair in person at the end of September, along with a photographer that will um, be available that day to take headshots that you can use on your LinkedIn profile and different things like that. And then in October, we have topics like writing strong cover letters, um, building experience in the US, you know, how to get involved on campus, different ways to gain that transferable experience if you're not able to find, um, you know, an on-campus job right away, it's different ways to keep yourself busy and still obtain some of those skills, using LinkedIn effectively, mastering interviewing, and then we'll do another kind of summary of creating strong application materials. So this will include both cover letters and resumes in one session. And then our fall wraps up with the looking at summer 2025 job and internship search planning, um, because sometimes you do have to plan that far in advance. And so we'll talk through those timelines and strategies for searching and things like that. Um, and then here I included just a couple more events that you may be interested in attending that we are supporting, but we are not the hosts of. Um, and so the student employment at Webster Overview is taking place in person on August 29th. And that is a great session to learn a little bit about student employment on campus from the Human Resources Office and hear from some common departments on campus that are in charge of hiring students. Um, and what they look for in those applications and things like that. And then the International Recruitment and Services Office hosts their OPT and CPT workshops each semester. Um, and those are great sessions to attend to learn, you know, those step-by-step -step processes, eligibility, all of that type of thing that 
that the International Recruitment and Services Office can answer for when you're ready to apply for CPT or OPT. So those are all coming up as well. And these bottom three sessions, you can sign up for via the IRIS Connections page, and they're also in Involved at Webster. And then the student employment session is on Handshake as well. So that's how you can get find those. And that is just a summary of our resources and our events. So now we will take some questions. Does anyone have anything? And Carrie has listed those CPT and OPT links in the group chat here as well. So if you're looking for those directly and oh. someone had a question, go ahead. Sorry. Hi. Sorry, I'm outside. It's going to be a little bit noisy, but I just had like a few questions about the career planning. So mm -hmm. I'm on my, I just like ended my summer semester. Now I, I'm going to have my fall one semester starting mm -hmm. next week. And I was just wondering since uh, I'm not in uh, San Luis, we're based in San Antonio College, mm -hmm. like okay. the campus. Yes. And uh, it's since we are more learning about San Luis, I want to know like if there is any openings uh, that will come up in handshake for uh, San Antonio campus, or is it just I have to be, uh, I have to reach out to someone in San Antonio campus or just look for handshake? And my second question is like, I do understand about the CPT and OPT training, but it's our internship different from CPT OPT uh, that we can take after ending our full semester. Yeah, those are good questions. I think I'll let Carrie tackle the San Antonio oh, yeah, on campus sure. question. Yeah. So in terms of on campus jobs, um, like 90% of the on-campus jobs are in the home campus in St. Louis, Missouri, just because that's where a lot of our like physical resources are housed. Um, so for those, they tend to have in person, even though we support all of our students, you know, around the United States. So as far as I'm aware, I think there have been like two or three student worker jobs that have been posted at the San Antonio campus before. So if they do have those opportunities, they will be listed on Handshake the same way and they would be specified that they're hiring for that campus. But um, unfortunately, yeah, just the majority of those positions are, are here in St. Louis. For off-campus opportunities, so once you are eligible for an internship off-campus, through CPT, if you were an F1 student, or for full-time jobs, there certainly are positions in Texas. So we have employers that are all across the United States that post job opportunities. So sometimes we do have more kind of in the Midwest because if we're physically connecting with employers at events or things, um, they're sometimes a little bit more represented, but even for places like Edward Jones, they're headquartered in St. Louis, but they have sites all over the country. So they post positions, you know, at a variety of locations. Um, so yes, there are, absolutely are internship, like full-time job postings for Texas or elsewhere. Um, but yeah, Handshake is one place. If you are kind of, you know, getting close to graduating, you know, you are always welcome to look on other job boards as well, because we know not every employer in the country country uses handshake a lot do but certainly not mm -hmm. um, and, and that you want to oh yeah i can talk about the second question and that spreadsheet that i showed you for the st louis local area employers the san antonio one is coming so that is my next project is to put in those san antonio companies that have been more likely to sponsor those visas but you can use going global now and search by the San Antonio metro area and, and do your own searches as well there. So, um, but that spreadsheet will be built next, my next project there as well. 
Um, and then your next question was about, is CBT and OPT different than the internship that you will do for your program? So um, for an international student, if you do an intern, once you reach your year of being in your program, so your year or four, four terms, you are eligible to work off campus in an internship capacity. Um, so if your program requires it, then it should be one in the same. You will be using your CPT eligibility to complete that internship requirement for your program. And then once you have completed your program and you have graduated, you are able to work on your OPT for one full year after graduation. And so they're a little bit, um, if you're, if your program requires an internship and you are an international student, you do use your CPT for that internship. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Yes, this, it did answer my question. And I'm so glad that you're working for San Antonio campus too, because us, like, uh, we feel like we're so apart from St. Mm -hmm. Louis campus. You know, we're still the student, but, but mm -hmm. the information is quite not clear sometimes. So I'm glad you made it clear to me. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. And we're always willing. We can meet virtual. Our, all of our appointment offerings are virtual and we do our best to make most of our events virtual as well so that people like you can be included as well. Anybody else have any questions today? Yeah, thank you all for coming. And we look forward to seeing you at some of our future events. And we hope this was helpful for you today.